Bible study, the scene was set, it was a beautiful day in the middle of May. Trevor was focused, as he is usually, on supporting the youth of our church in Bible study, and when Isabel and some other friends came in, I welcomed them and shared with them where the young adults were meeting. And after the study, Faith Conovich, who Isabel was staying with and still uh, stays with for the time being, came up to Trevor and said, hey, Trevor, there's this new girl here, and I want you to take care of her. Evidently, Isabel overheard this interaction. <laughs> but for some reason, the only words that you shared with her that evening were in the parking lot on the way out of the church, saying, it was nice to meet you, Isabel. <laughs> and her response, it was nice to meet you too. Little did you guys know what God would have in store for you. About a month after that first meeting, I invited Isabel uh, and Nadia to come up with me to Camp Mohim. That's a summer camp uh, out in the Ohio Conference. And I was going up there to teach the junior Sabbath school for camp meeting. And uh, my wife, Kenny, and I were going up there. And uh, at this point, Isabel, Trevor had already begun to notice you. Here's what Trevor said. He said, after Nathaniel had us all sit together in church and she hung out with us for a whole day, I decided through observing her that she was someone I might want to get to know. <laughs> what sparked my interest in her was her Christ-like character, her desire to get involved in church. We both had similar desires spiritually, and I found that when I talked about the things that I was passionate about in the Word of God, that she shared that same passion. She was someone I saw that I could come alongside, and we could continue our journey with God together. Trevor had already begun to notice you, and uh, friends began to notice that, hey, this could be an interesting pairing. <laughs> when Isabel and Nadia confirmed to be coming to Mohe, I had an idea that creeped into my mind. I should call Trevor and see if he would be interested in coming up to camp as well. So I picked up the phone, and I said, Trevor, I'm in charge of junior Sabbath school at camp meeting. How would you feel about coming up with me, leaving the church at 6 a.m., and spending the day up at camp meeting? Well, I'm in charge of Sabbath school here at the church, and, and I, Isabel and Nadia are going to be there. <laughs> and I can always find somebody else. <laughs> it was 6 a.m., and we all piled into my wife's HRV, and we took this three-hour drive up to Mohaven. And if I recall correctly, you all spent the next three hours talking. Most of the time while we were at the camp, chatting, and then continued to dialogue in the entire trip back to Dayton. All the while, my wife Kenyon and I shared knowing looks in the front seat. <laughs> Just noticing what could be this blossoming, beautiful, new friendship that was taking place in the back. You all spent a good amount of time together over the summer. Isabel, you even came down to West Virginia for the end of our mission trip and rode down with Faith. And uh, on the end of that trip, you guys talked and hiked together and just grew deeper in your friendship with one another. Before you guys became official, there was a day when Isabel wanted to go shopping. And uh, you decided, I'm going to pick up the phone, I'm going to see if Trevor would like to join me. PetSmart, Marshalls, Kroger, some gumdrop grapes. And finally, you ended up at a store called Bon Mon. Isabel was pawning through the dresses, and at first, Trevor just kind of followed along, observing, but after a little while, he warmed up to the occasion. And then he would run ahead of her and paw through the dresses himself, <laughs> looking for different things that might look good on Isabel. <laughs> Suddenly he was engaged and energetic and really enjoying what they were doing together. It all ended up in a bit of a fashion show and uh, a little bit of Trevor forgetting how to do math when paying the cashier. <laughs> but Isabel shared that she wrote in her journal that evening about the experience. That was fun. And it felt natural for us to be together. It would definitely become more natural to see you guys together over those next few months. People began to speak of you guys as a couple, Trevor and Isabel. Trevor and Isabel. 
often inseparable. But it wasn't until taking three days to fast, to pray, and to speak with spiritual mentors, friends, and family that you decided that you guys should be together. I remember Trevor being so nervous about what you were going to say after those three days. And how after a rain-soaked bike ride, he shared with me that it was in God's hands. I'll also never forget the big, goofy grin on his face when he shared the good news after you all met together, after those three days of prayer. It was soon after that you were officially dating, time with your family, a visit to Maine, camping trips with friends, the first I love yous all soon followed. Worships together. Isabel bringing you lunch at work when she should have been sleeping after a long night shift. Flowers waiting for you in the Konovich's garage after a long shift of work. Little notes of encouragement. Bible verses and just thoughts of care for one another. Riding in Trevor's Lexus, windows down, singing Frank Sinatra at the top of the <laughs> And on May 29 in Mohican State Park, after a beautiful day of hiking, Trevor got down on one knee and asked you to marry him. Do you remember how you responded? What did you say? Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, of course, I will marry you. And that's when prep for this day began in haste. A beautiful story of faith, friendship, and love. A saga of two hearts, two lives, and two unique experiences joined together only through God's grace. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, we find these words, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. These verses remind us of the importance of partnership, of strength and support that we can find in one another. Marriage is like this car journey that you're taking. It's something that you guys love to do. There's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be detours. And sometimes, maybe even a little bit of backseat driving. But as long as you're both in that front seat together, the journey will be an incredible adventure. Today, we bear witness to the joining of these two lives, each carrying its own story, its own experience, and its own faith. Trevor and Isabel, you came here today with your own unique journeys, shaped by your past and your present and your future. But now in this sacred covenant, you embark on a new journey together, a shared journey of faith and of love and of unity. Never stop supporting each other and lifting each other up before God. You've prayed for each other long before you even knew each other. Don't stop now. In 1 Corinthians 13, the Apostle Paul offers a profound definition of love. A love that reflects the divine love we receive from our Creator. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. It always trusts always hopes, and it always perseveres. Trevor and Isabel, in the presence of God and all those gathered here, you're committing to love each other in this profound and selfless way. Your love is not merely an emotion or a feeling. It is a reflection of the divine love that surrounds us and sustains us. It's the love of God. 